yeah, 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 something new, something new, something different, something different. What's going on, y'all? Lockout men in the place to be. I am right here, coming at you guys with another podcast. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about uh, we're talking about these companies out here, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know what I'm saying? We uh, we're gonna see, we, we're gonna see if these companies is uh, good for you guys. You know. Y'all ask a lot of questions. Y'all have a lot of questions. So the best way to do it is just to talk to a driver that either worked or worked for that company. You know what I'm saying? Today's company we're gonna uh, today's company we're gonna dive into is uh, Hirschbach. Yeah, you guys know Hirschbach. You know what I'm saying? They um, they they're a company company, but they they want you to be more of a uh, lease own uh, lease driver for the company. Now I have called this company. You know, I, I called this company a while back and got a little bit of information. Um, and in my comment session, a lot of you guys had came in and 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 debunked a lot of what the recruiter had said at the time. Um, now what struck me with Hirschbach was that they did they do offer lease they do offer offer leasing but I wasn't sure if it was lease purchase right so um if you're a lease driver you you should have options of controlling the truck the way you want to control it but with Hirschbach I don't believe they give you the options, but I do have a gentleman here. He was, he's a friend of the show. He's been here before. Uh, you guys know him as bees knees trucking on YouTube. My man, Shane, he comes in today. He comes in. Today. What's going on? What's going on? He comes in today. He, um, he worked it, you know, he, he worked it for Hirschbach and, or drove, for Hirschbach at the time uh, when we had our interview together, uh, you know, I guess he liked it at the time, you know, he, you know, he didn't have nothing bad to say about the company, but uh, a couple of weeks later, I, you know, I noticed that he, you know, he left the company and I was curious to the fact of why he left it. And I figured with this, new series that I'm doing right now with the drivers. I think this was pretty much a good time to get him on to let you guys know the good, the bad, and the ugly of Hirschbach. So uh let's uh let's get into it, man. Hirschbach. Let me let me see if I can get Hirschbach up here for you. Let's see. Hirschbach. There we go. Uh whoops. Huh. It brought up a guy. Hold on, let's say, yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, drive for Hirschbach.com. There it is. There it is. Right here, Hirschbach. So, um, shame, man. So, let's let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's let's start at the beginning. Uh. Let's start at the beginning with Hirschbach. How how was the orientation? You know, getting you know getting into the company, talking to the recruiter. Uh, from the time you got in the orientation until the time you got into the actual truck. All right. So from the beginning, um, beginning there there was there was really there was no problem. My recruiter was Austin, and Austin was uh. He he did the interview, <clears throat> and excuse me, and uh, goes over the qualifications, and then starts asking questions like, "All right, um, well, do you have a problem with staying away for you know three weeks, and you know going home, you know then and then and then you know going from there?" And I was like, "No, I don't have a problem staying out as long as you know me, as long as I'm out on the road um, for that period of time that I'm doing something that." going to be for the better of my family because you know it's like i've always said i think I even said in the first interview if i'm going to be away for my family you, then, got, um, you got to get paid for it. especially i better get compensated yeah <laughs> exactly so um 
And at that time, I, you know, uh, my years of experience, you know, I may not have 20 or 10 or whatever, but I like to say, um, you know, I have, I have more experience than, you know, I'm not just coming fresh out of the gate type deal. And my record is, uh, still to this day is clean. Um, I only have one, one itty bitty, uh, uh, violation on there and it's not even really that big of a deal, but, um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and uh so you know from the beginning and the interview with austin i did he was pretty much straight up and to this day i still look at as if austin wasn't really just trying to uh get a bonus so to speak so um so i don't have a problem with that so uh, the, so, uh, recru- the so, they- so talking to so talking to the recruiter was was a uh, was a pretty good experience. You, he he pretty yeah, much he was, was straight. Experience. He was straight up with you. He gave you he gave you all the answers you had to your questions. Yeah, yeah, he didn't lie to me. I asked him about um, what type of pay scale, what it, what it was. I said, you know, do uh, is it going to be? Um, do I get to see these loads? And he was like, no, you don't get to see, but you have a choice. You know, it's a sliding pay scale. It's based off the mileage. Uh, off that load and that determines the rate of pay and then he actually sent me um, some documents to show me uh, that rate of pay and everything and then he goes into it and uh, he, I asked him about trucks I said okay uh, you know I, I really like freight liners um, over the internationals I said uh, you know and, and I see that y'all have a lot of internationals am I going really big and he says Sam be honest with you um you know, I, I can't promise you any type of vehicle. You know, when you get here, the vehicle you get is what the vehicle that we have mm-hmm. available uh, to us. So, um, yeah, he, he, he didn't really inflate it that. He didn't promise me nothing that uh, that when I got there, I was like, oh, wait, this guy straight out lied. Because honestly, at that point, I, you know, that's fresh in the game. I would have just hopped my merry ass back on the plane and, <laughs> went back home <laughs> if if I think it was shady at that point because once you kind of get in the truck and you get situated and then you go out there it's, it's almost like alright well you know if, if something goes wrong you gotta have your ducks covered and, and a plan head so uh, um, you know you're not uh, what I'm trying to say you're just not um, so, so you're not fucking yourself I guess in a way um, but uh yeah, but yeah, so all that process that was good, and uh, so what about no problems with Austin? So, so what about uh, all right? So you know, uh, uh, the the recruiting, the recruiting was uh pretty good. How 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 did they get you out there? What 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 was the uh, what was the uh, process of getting you out there? Process of getting me out there after that, then he started running my paperwork, and um. That came back fairly quickly. He did a drug test and everything, and, uh, you know, I don't really worry about that. So um, all that came back fairly quickly, and then he scheduled me a uh, plane ticket to fly out. I okay. flew out. Okay, okay. Uh, they fly you yeah. out there. They, they, no Greyhound, no no Greyhound bus no. cramped up. What, what was the hotel stay? How, how was your hotel stay there? The hotel stay was good. It was up in the Best Western uh, up there, and um, it had a pool. It had uh, the food. You had food vouchers uh, that you the food vouchers would cover for your dinner. And then um, during the orientation, they actually took us to like a Texas uh, roadhouse, and they covered that whole meal. Um, okay. And that wasn't on one of our food vouchers, so. Uh, that in between the hotel stay with the free uh the breakfast was at this like restaurant that was attached to the hotel um obviously they have a deal with them and uh breakfast was you know more than good so i was actually that's what really struck me was at the very beginning where i was like oh wow i said okay so they treat you um they treat you pretty good you know i've i've uh, gone to another company and, and it's like okay uh are they sticking you in this this uh 
roach motel over here and then you're sharing a room with somebody else mm-hmm. and you don't know this person and then you know i don't know i just i'm not saying i just hate on people but uh uh you know i, I tend to uh, i gotta warm up to somebody before i start sharing a room and then my stuff's in there with them you know i just never really cared for that um All right. so what about so when that whole experience Oh, okay, okay, okay. That uh, <laughs> sorry to cut you off right quick. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, what about what about the uh, what about the orientation? Uh, real quick, what, what about the orientation itself? Uh, how long how long was the orientation? Uh, the orientation was how long was that? Got there on a got there on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I believe I was out. I was out out of the class by like a Wednesday. I think that was the last day of the class. Um, I actually got the truck assigned. Uh, they found up the paperwork on the last day. You meet the owner of the company. You meet his wife. Um, nice people, you know. And uh, he struck me, you know, being uh, former military, you know. Obviously, I could tell he's former military. So I was like, all right. So, uh you know, this company I'm about to work for, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, should, you know, have some morals and, and stuff like that. And I'm just thinking, all right, you know, hopefully it's going to be, it seems like it's going to be a different kind of experience and I'm getting a good vibe from it. Okay. Um, did they kind of rush through the, uh, LLC paperwork, you know, I'll be honest with you. Well, I me, was, I was trying to read. Let me, let me ask you this, but let me ask you this, um, during orientation, this is, this is where they 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 tr- they they get you guys to make a decision whether or not you want to go lease or if you want to go company. Uh, you actually you you're they're kind of making that decision uh, before you get there. Oh. So when you um when yeah when you're talking to a recruiter on the phone, he's, you know you're you're gonna let them know. Okay, well if you're gonna go company. Uh, for the most part, their company is in the dedicated lanes, and Hirschbach does a lot of chicken, mm-hmm. and a lot of his chicken farms and his chicken accounts. So you, in order to get those accounts, you really have to be in the Midwest. Now, they did open up, I believe. Uh, they offered me a position right before I left over in Dallas, uh, Texas, over there at that terminal, but I guess I'll be later in the uh, today's interview up talk about that and why i didn't make that decision okay. um to go to go dedicated <laughs> okay so why so uh, so 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 what what the what the recruiter uh and the orientate well what the recruiter did they pretty much tell you they pretty much let you know that this is this is uh not a company driver position that you're that you're going into they they let you know right off the rip that this is a a lease, a, is this lease, uh, lease or lease purchase? Are you buying the truck no, or are you a, renting the truck? No, you're 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 buying the truck. Um, you're making the payments. You have the uh, payments that come out of your settlement each uh, time. You then you have the insurance payments. You have, I mean, your deduct the deductions are are legit on that. You're you're buying a truck. It's in the contract that you're uh, that you buy the truck. Um, but what's also in the contract, which I uh, I didn't know until uh, <laughs> until that time where so uh, you know obviously it's a balloon. Print. Yeah, it's a uh, balloon payment at the end of that contract. And uh, that is one thing I do wish the recruiter may have said to me prior to hopping on that plane i'm not saying maybe that would have changed my decision about it at the time but it would have gave me another uh option piece of about. information yeah and to think about with a balloon payment i believe my balloon payment was around uh don't we, don't want to lie i believe it was somewhere around the 30s um 30 30 grand is what you would uh, have to uh, have to pay at the end of the contract in order to buy that truck outright. Okay. So, okay. so with, yeah. so, so with, with that, uh, you, you made it to the orientation pretty much. You, you pretty much agreed. Is this a, is this a walkaway lease? Yes, it's a walkaway lease. And at the time I walked away and still to this day, they, uh, it didn't give me no issues about it. I, now, I didn't destroy the truck. I didn't wreck it. Um, you know, so I left it in the same condition the whole time 
that when I had it. So I didn't have no issues when I walked away from the lease. Um, do they really tell you it's a walk away lease? No, they don't tell you unless you ask. I'm be, let's be honest. Yeah, they, but, they uh, don't want you to. They they when they yeah. get you in, they they don't want you to start <laughs> thinking like when you start driving. And, you know, you get in there and you don't like it, and then boom, you walk away from it. They don't want to tell you that yeah. right off the rip. All right, so what's no. uh, so so with the company, man? They get you uh, they get you in the truck, and you you said that you uh. You said that you liked the freight liners, but you you ended up getting into a, a international. Yeah, I ended up getting international, and just to go back to on that uh, contract, there's a heavy out of gas. Um, when I walk away, because you gotta, <laughs> I'll just say it now before I forget about that. Uh, and when you do decide to do that walk away, and you walk away, your last settlement you're not going to get for uh, you. They don't. They didn't really tell you this either. They didn't tell me. Um, for forty five days, uh, that's 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 how long it takes to uh get your last settlement. Damn. Um, a month just to get your last you settlement? Yeah, forty five days. Forty five days. What are what are they what are okay, that's that we, we could talk more on that on a on a bad side on a bad side of it. Uh yeah. so uh what what's the trucks like? What's what's the amenities in the trucks? Uh, the truck was actually really clean. Uh, at the time that when I was working there, they uh, had offered uh, Sirius XM radio. The truck actually had a uh, card from a detailing company that they used, mm -hmm. um, and they left their business card. And, I mean, the floor was obviously, uh, I mean, the whole truck, it was probably the cleanest truck I've ever received from any company. Okay. Um, whoever they had clean that truck, I mean, did did very very good. The only thing I did was kind of like just a little sanitation thing I have is uh, you know the areas I'm going to be touching up there by the uh, truck and you know the the wheel and everything. So, but the fridge was cleaned out. I did I sanitized that too. You know, I did my own little thing, which you know everybody does. But uh, as far as like cleanliness and the condition of the truck, even the outside of the truck, you know, the wheels were in good shape. The outside. Uh, the only nicks that were there were some nicks and they were already previously reported um is obviously that what, truck is used you know what's what's uh what, what all come inside the truck what's 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 the amenities the uh sirius xm radio the uh fridge and they had uh the uh, direct tv okay. um they offered that too okay. for the satellite they, so they they, yeah. they offered to the die they didn't have a they didn't have a monitor in there or nothing like that they just offered the, the direct tv satellite yeah and they had the tv in there as well oh they had a tv in there okay so you get uh so you yep, get a t yep. so you get a tv refrigerator inverter all that good stuff clean yep. uh you know, spanking clean. What what was the year of the truck? What's 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 the years that they that they got on uh that they got for the trucks? Is it no, like, the year the truck I had was a 2018 model. Oh, okay. So they got anywhere between eighteens, nineteens, and twenties, I guess, right? Yeah, and as soon as they get about three years, um, they're gonna call you the least uh purchase contracts. They're set up like that too. So if you don't buy your truck, um you know, they're they're either, you're either going to release and, and get another truck, or you're going to buy it out. So, uh, and you know, it's pretty much those two options because what, that truck is getting rotated. What what about uh what about pet and rider policies? Do they do they offer that? Yeah, they offer that, and uh, you know, they don't. Uh, I didn't ask because I didn't have a dog, but I'm sure you know if you have a dog. That's one of the questions you're going to be asking a recruiter. Uh, there is a. Uh, there's a pet deposit that you'll pay. I believe it's like five hundred dollars. I believe mm -hmm. um, it's five hundred dollars for the pet deposit. And they'll take that out of your truck, uh, out of your, uh, out of your check in increments, right? Yeah, and they take it out of increments. Yep. Okay. All right. So uh, what? The and then oh, go ahead. Yeah, and then uh, just a little thing, and then the rider policy, uh, they do have that. And, uh, you know, you can have your kids, Young's, your kid is, I believe, uh, 13 years old. Uh, no, no, I think it's over 10 years old. I have to double check that, double check that. But it, it, it's, um, as long as your kid's over that age, uh, you know, you'll sign the waiver and then they take that out for as long as that rider 
is on your truck, they'll take that out and increment okay. your settlement as well. So you, uh, how, how do you guys, uh, how's the payout? Is it uh, weekly, biweekly, and direct deposit? Yeah, it's by direct deposit. It was weekly for me. Um, while while I was leaving, hold on. Mm-hmm. While I was leaving, there was um, an option of what they were trying to do was after every load that they would be paying out after every load. Oh, okay. And they were test. Okay. Uh, yeah, they were testing that out with, uh, I believe, like a group of ten drivers, and I knew one of them, and they really liked that. Um, and, uh, you know, so, after every load, you, you scan in your paper and then you, you got your, uh, so, you got your money off. So that load. how, how's the, how's the pay? They, they pay you percentage CPM. I mean, I was well, probably CPM because you did mention the fact that it was a sliding scale. So break, uh, break yeah. that down. And what was the average miles that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, a potential, a potential lease driver could get with her spot? All right, so when I first got there, the potential miles, you know, realistically, you're going to be getting, when I first got there, I I was getting 3,000 miles right off the rip. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's a sliding pay scale. So when you start looking at the pay scale, that 3,000 is going to break down to about a buck a mile. Um, Or 99 cents. No, it's a buck a mile. Um, And that's what's going to break down to. Now you start getting lower mileage, that pay scale obviously starts moving up. And uh, so, you know, that's pretty much where I started at was around three grand. And then what I noticed was uh, it kind of stayed there for a little while. Mm -hmm. And and then my mileage kind of went down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it kind of bounced back up. And then that last month I was there, that's when it just went, you know, real, real uh south and uh i wasn't liking it um yeah and i just you know uh you can talk about that i guess when we get to the bad side i don't know (laughs) yeah so all right so 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 it's a sliding scale so you know let me you know for the people that don't don't know what a sliding scale is it's like the more the more you make the less miles you do and then the less you make the more miles you do so if you if you get a if you get a route that's like uh say like a thousand like thousand miles or something like that then the sliding scale is going to be on the low end because i i don't i i really don't understand why they do that i mean me personally i i don't like it but they they try to say that you know just in case you get some low miles uh some low miles yeah. like 200 300 miles you know the 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 you get more pay on that to balance everything out you know me personally i i I, I don't (laughs) i don't like it personally i i'd rather have if you're gonna if you're gonna pay me my if you're gonna pay me mileage pay pay me straight pay i don't need it to go up and down i i I don't need that um all right so the mouth so drivers so they can paid off of uh so they can the mileage pay was paid off. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm oh, keep interrupting. No, 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 no. You good. You good. <laughs> no, so the drivers, uh, so the drivers can theoretically can average about 3,000 miles uh, a week there. And you said with the, with the sliding pay, it, 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 it ranges around a dollar a mile. Yeah. It ranges around a dollar a mile. Now there's miles, is gonna be um obviously uh zip to zip, right? Right. Um they don't pay practical miles. Uh and for I guess people that are listening that really don't know I don't wanna, I don't wanna uh, dumb anyone's intelligence, but <laughs> they're not paying they're paying zip to zip. So, you know, you lose out on some mileage, um, uh, when you start looking at at it. It just it adds up at the end, you a, know, of the year when you start looking at a dollar, you know, the miles that you lose out. A dollar a mile, though. I mean, you got you got owner operators out here fighting, you know, fighting with the brokers and fighting with, you know, trying to get help from the government just to get two dollars a mile, man. A dollar, they a, a dollar a mile for a lease driver. Now, hmm. The, you you wasn't choosing your you wasn't choosing your lows there with first spot right 
the Hershbach no. Hershbach chose chose your own lows, right? Yeah, Hershbach. Okay, so the thing is, you don't see you don't see your loads, and uh, that's one issue that I started to have a problem with. Okay. Um. Yeah. So you wasn't uh, able you you, you, know, you wasn't I, able to see you you so the way so the way dispatch the way they dispatch you out they gave you they gave you some options or or they gave you uh they just gave you what they wanted to give you and you had to run it. Yeah, no, you didn't have to run anything there. They never made you forced. Um, now you, they wouldn't maybe try to sweet talk you. You know, uh, get a get a little pretty girl on the phone or whatever. You know, or what, mm-hmm. <laughs> and sweet talk you, but uh, asking maybe for a favor, and that would be my suggestion. Um, you know, I started, and you know, I was like, all right, you know, I'm not gonna buck them. They treat me good i'm gonna do the favor and then you know those favors in the end they start to uh, add uh up and start to notice where add up and, and you're it's not, not working you're it's not working yourself. in your favor in your favor it's working in yeah. theirs but not yours man it's but not yours yeah uh all right man so so before we move before we move on uh so d- pretty much some of the good stuff there you know you can't average they give you a nice truck they give you uh you know the amenities for the truck um they give you you know they they pretty much you know for the good part they give you a clean truck uh let's uh let's you know to sum up to sum up the good part so what was what was some of the best parts of working for Hirschbach? Some of the best parts was just the uh, just having the at the at the very beginning. I guess I'll break down section. The very best part, at the very beginning, was just how they treated you, and, and I never, uh, I, you know, they they treated you really good. And then when you get that truck, it's like, oh wow, you know, they're handing me a really really nice truck. It may not be the truck I want, but it's a really nice truck, so it gets you thinking, you know, well, you know, yeah, I guess, yeah, I would pay for something like that. And then, um, you know, the amenities that they offer, and, you know, I guess out of all, my, the favorite part was at first was just I could, the relationship and the rapport that you build with your uh, fleet manager, with your manager, your driver manager, and, uh, you know, and, and at first she was, doing me a solid so i loved it okay i loved it all right you know and uh yeah it, it that relationship obviously changed a little bit well, let's uh but let's, um, let's jump into that yeah. let's, let's jump on the uh let's jump on the bad side man what's what some of the what's some of the what's some of the bad that you could tell uh you know potentials out here that's interested in getting into Hirschbach? What, what what kind of bad uh bad stuff that you've seen with the company that that you don't like some of the bad stuff is in my opinion when they when they send you a load and this is something you have to be really careful on some of these loads they have a lot of time on it um and as a lease purchase you know if you're taking that load and you get there early but you can't deliver early obviously no matter where you're at um, you're not making, you're not going to be making money while sitting. Right. Um, and, and unless it's detention or, or something along those lines. And that started becoming an issue as well. How often, um, but how, like how often would they, you, how often that they had you sit? Would, well, let me wait. Do, is you talking about sitting between lows or sitting when you get to, uh, a shipper and or a receiver. On this instance, I'm talking about sitting when you get to shipper and receiver, okay. um, but also sitting between loads. Oh, between That's loads. more of what happened at the end. Uh, that happened at the very end, and I just i I started I can't couldn't take it anymore. But um, at first, it was that sh- sitting at you know. Um, while you're on that load, you get there and you can't deliver. You try to check in and be like, oh, well, uh, we can't take you today. Um, we're going, you're going to have to wait till tomorrow. And, wow. uh, you know, yeah. And 
that's a whole day and i wish do they give you uh when, do they do they give you do they give you uh layover pay detention pay yeah they did at first they would give you layover pay now that's not something they automatically give you i'm be honest that's something that you're going to have to really call your driver manager and you're going to have to uh you're gonna have to ask for it. Let's be real. You know, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to almost ask slash demand uh, for that uh, layover pay. Um, now, that's the experience that I'm talking about. Is the experience with my driver manager. So I'm not trying to. I'm not going to sugarcoat what what for the company. But mm-hmm. I am listing my experiences that I've had while with my driver manager. I obviously have friends that are still there um, that have different driver managers and they have a different experience. Um, so that's, that's the deal, you know, where I want to do keep, uh, in people's mind is no matter where you're at, your experience is going to be based off pretty much the person that you're dealing with directly. And if you're able to switch to another driver manager, that'll behoove you, uh, till you make that ultimate decision, unless that ultimate decision just outweighs, you know, what you're willing to do. So, um, you know, that being said, uh, you know, the relationship was really good. She would pay me for the, uh, layover, pay me for the detention time. And, you know, or if I sat before, you know, when I first got there, I guess this was, this would have been on the good side, um, that she would say, Hey, take that to, uh, take that to, we have a drop yard in there. You go ahead and drop that off. We'll get, we'll relay it, you know, have someone pick it up and uh, I'm put you on this other load. And that was really good, but that helped out my bottom line. That helped me produce more numbers, produce more miles, get more loads, et cetera. But then when those options get taken away, um, that really hurts your bottom line. That really hurts the numbers you're going to produce um, when you're sitting and waiting, right. when it looks like on just about every load. So, and So is Hirschbach, uh, is, you say they do a lot of chicken, so is Hirschbach a, a refrigerated company? Yeah. Yeah, they're uh, they're a reefer company. Um, they do at the time I was there is nothing but uh, reefer. They do a lot of meats. You know, a lot of your chicken farms out of the Midwest. A lot of your uh, meats as well, and uh, everything kind of comes from that Midwest. And then it's like a like a beat heartbeat. You know, if you're imagining that heartbeat, it's going to start in that Midwest. It's going to go out, and then you're going to go back. You're going to go out, and then going to kind of come back to the same Midwest. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay, so do, yeah. so they so, so uh, they uh so as far as they, they do they have uh like region like regional lanes or uh dedicated lanes or is they straight forty eight? No, they had a uh, region dedicated, and that is uh that's a little bit different um for the lease. You can do a lease purchase in that, and you'll be offered a guarantee rate. Um, or not guarantee where you'll be offered a guarantee at the end of the week, as long as you are available to work, you know, and you, you, uh, for that whole week, et cetera, um, then you get a guarantee. Um, and that's a little bit different. That's region. You're on dedicated, you, uh, working for a particular, uh, uh, farm or, or account so for, and that's all you're doing. So, and, uh, so for that, it's you, going, you, you can't, uh, you, you can't turn down loads, uh, if you're on a dedicated lane. Yeah, if you're on a dedicated lane, in my opinion, you're not going to be. Um, you know, I didn't do it, but I don't. I don't foresee them being happy <laughs> with being on a dedicated and turning down loads. Okay. You know, I think that would probably be an issue. All right, all right. But you know, do you? All right. Uh, all right. So Hirschbach, man. So that's uh, you know, that's that's some of the bad stuff about it. Uh, you know, that some of the bad stuff that's that's coming across. What do you what do you think of this statement right here, man? The the company has one of the best plans out there. They care about their drivers. They do their best to accommodate the drivers. Uh, besides driving miles. Uh, besides driving miles. What do you, what do you say to that statement right there? Is is that a is that an accurate statement of the company? <laughs> uh, at first, it was. At first, yes, that statement lived up. And what I start to notice at the end was Hertzbach is you know a growing company, mm-hmm. 
and uh some of the people i was talking to you know got word that uh due to them being growing and um everything else they their office staff isn't really growing so their driver managers aren't growing their dispatchers aren't growing with that number so what's all that's happening is these drivers are getting put on these driver managers and these dispatchers and it's becoming more of a uh, load i guess for them right Mm -hmm. so now instead of hustling for let's say that driver manager had you know let's just throw out a number of 200 trucks and now their numbers doubled to 400 trucks Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that's where my experience changed. And I could tell, I could tell in the base of the voice, it was pretty much, um, you know, at first I would call and everything else. And what struck me on, you know, I'm be honest is when I called my particular driver manager and, uh, she was like, Hey, you know, I really prefer if we could do this, uh, communication over, over the Qualcomm, you know, only be calling up here if it's like an emergency type deal okay. you know and uh yeah and that kind of um i'm be honest with you i i don't mind texting i don't mind or sending messages over that call com right but you know when it's dealing with another load or a question i'm i'm not gonna send it in a in a message i i'd rather call somebody get somebody on the phone and and get that answer that I'm looking for. If I have any questions, I can I can directly hear that person over the phone and articulate the response that they're they're giving me. And you can't do that over uh, a message. Okay. So I started to notice that they were getting irritated, um, <laughs> irritated by calling. So you know, so the question is, you know, do they care about the drivers? It's you know that becomes a hard a hard thing that, uh, I, I answered with my driver manager that I had, you know, um, does, did she care about me at the beginning? Yeah. Now at the end, did she care about me? Um, nope. just be honest. No, no. man. Just be, uh, just, be yeah, no. just be honest. Just be honest. No, she didn't, yeah. she didn't care about you at, she didn't no. care about you at the end. Uh, maybe, you know, the relationship, the relationship with, uh, yeah, relationship with, with, with the driver manager or fleet manager should always, you know, I always feel that if you have a good rapport with your driver manager or fleet manager, it makes your time at the company a lot better. Man, what about uh, what what about a uh, touch? Did did you have to touch the freight? Is it touch freight there? No, no touch freight. Right. Um, you know, you're yeah, you don't touch the freight at all. The only thing you're doing is you make sure the load secure by their load bars okay. and. That's about it, man. Yeah. What, uh, what about um, would, would they help? Would they help drivers that don't have CDLs? Uh, would they help uh, drivers to get their CDLs if they don't have it? Do they have like a school there or something? No, they actually uh, changed the uh, hiring requirements while I was there. Um, it started off. I think you only needed like what was it like six months or something to get into it. And now I believe it's like a year. Um, and that's due to the drivers that they were hiring. They started having a lot of uh, accidents. Um, so they started making uh, more stringent um, hiring requirements um, because of that. All right. What about? And uh, uh, yeah. Did, so. did you get a? Did you get a? Did you get a? Uh, did you get a sign-on bonus there? No, no sign-on. No bonus. sign-on bonus. What about? Um, what about some type of physical? Did you have to do a physical while you was there uh, to, to get in through orientation? Did they all do a physical with you? I'm talking about not a. Yeah, I'm not talking about. A, uh, I'm not talking about a, you know your DOT physical. I'm talking about like one of them. See if you can get into the yeah, truck. Yeah, one of their workout yeah, physicals. Yeah. 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 No, no, no physicals. No. Nope. Uh, they did the. Uh, the only thing that happened there now was that uh, you know you do the. Uh, the driving test, but that's obviously no physical, but you know, that's, uh, yeah, there's no physicals other than what's needed for your DOT physical. What benefits did they, what benefits did they offer you guys? Uh, the benefits, um, now you, now you, 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 you was a 1099 driver, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're an independent contractor. So you're not getting, you know, and that's where some people we were even asking during the orientation. Well, what about the uh, medical benefits? And I'm just, you know, you got, you know, that I get, you know, I, I don't put that really on the company. Um, just 
realize that, you know, in a 1099 position, no matter where you're at, you know, you're an independent contractor, you're not going to be entitled uh, to some, uh, you know, to regular employee benefits mm-hmm. because you're, in essence, not an employee. You're, you're, you're a contract. Your employment is, yeah, you're, is based off a contract. So <laughs> when they fire you or they let you go, it's, they're just canceling a contract. That's all they're doing. Or if you go, you're terminating a contract. Okay. And that's kind of like what I did. Yeah. All right. So what about, uh? do do you know if they hire felons? What's that? Do, do, do they hire or do they bring on felons? Yeah, they uh, bring on. Now, they look at your, uh, your record, you know, and that's, uh, I don't really know too much about that, but I do know um, they do, they, uh, they do a criminal check and they do work with you. It's, I think a lot of time it's just based off the uh, certain crime that you, the person may have committed or was found guilty okay. thereof. Um, okay. Okay. All right. What about, uh, hmm. what about, uh, do you get to take the truck home? I mean, you're a lease driver buying your own truck. So I'm sure you, are you able to take the truck home with you? No, you're able to take the truck home, you know, that's, you're able to do all that. You can take the truck home, you can go home. Uh, they prefer about three weeks to stay out. Um, so that never changed. Uh, they do, you know, once you stay out at least three weeks um, for that, and they look at about each week that you stay out, you're staying home for about three days, you know. And uh, that's one thing where um, – they never messed with me on home time. Mm-hmm. They they did get me home, but the thing is, is when you're going home, you know, you, if you live in the Midwest, I'm sure it'd probably be a little bit different of a uh, situation. But with me living in Louisiana, um, they just don't have a lot of freight. Uh, that that'll bring you down. <laughs> down that that will bring you down. You got freight that'll take you down there, but they don't have none coming out. Yeah. Yeah, they don't have them coming out. So you're, you know, you're having to get deadheaded. You know, you're, you're, you leave the area and they're, they're going to pay you for that miles. You know, when they, when you look at the mileage, they're going to pay you for that. Um, but, you know, you could get stuck. And that's, that's pretty much what happened to me. I, I did a load the last, the last month I was there. I started getting, you know, I did a favor for them. I started out that I got caught up and said, Hey, uh, Shane, no, we, we, uh, we have a load in this area. You know, you're only going to go, uh, like 30 miles with it, blah, blah, blah. Um, you'll be really doing us a favor. Uh, you know, they, they'll take you right now. I said, Oh, well, shoot. Okay. Um, well, I was, uh, my driver manager said that she would, uh, hook me up right. Uh, for the weekend. And, uh, I'm here, made my delivery. It was like a, a Friday. And I said, uh, you know, I don't, I don't have a, where's my loads for the weekend? And, and she was like, well, your driver manager went home and she didn't have nothing on you. And she directly told me that she was going to set me up pre planning me for the weekend. And it didn't, and and it didn't work I got out. my feelings about that and, then, and it didn't work, didn't out. work out. And that was the second time that happened. And, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I was mad, right? I was, I was really mad. So at that time I'm like, okay, do you have any, anything else, anything else for me to do? And they're like, uh, no, no, we don't Shane. And that's where I wish I was as a lease purchase. You're able to see the loads because I'm not saying that the person was lying, but let's say if she was, I want to know if she's lying to me or not lying to me. All they're worried about is if they have a load, right. Mm-hmm. That, that, that needs to be delivered. That's, that's, they're, they're obviously not going to say, oh, well, we have this other paying load. No, they're going to try to get that load delivered so they don't, uh, <laughs> you know, fail on that delivery, gotcha. so to speak. So, so I was like, okay, well, I'll do it. And, uh, you know, if you get with that company, you, you make sure you go and do a favor as a lease purchase. Make sure you negotiate uh, something for doing that favor, right? No favor should be done for free. That was my mistake. So, no favor should be uh, done for free. So, and, and I'm not saying it was done for free because I got paid for it, but you don't get paid much for that load because it's it was like 30 miles. So you know. So what? Um, so what? So what? So what? Uh, so what that? So what that entails? Uh, 
you know, you know the weekend the weekend dispatch if if your if your fleet manager didn't have nothing to sign to you uh before she left for the weekend the weekend dis oh, you're the weekend dispatcher really couldn't do nothing for you that's that's nah, all in you're, a nutshell. You're pretty much yeah, you're hit for that weekend and as a lease purchase that's a strong that's a strong hit. Okay. That's a strong okay. hit. All right. Well and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well <laughs> so let's get what's what's the downright, you know, before we get up out of here, what's the downright ugly, man? What what was the uh downright ugly that affected your future with the company? This is what happened. <laughs> so the favors, like I was saying, taking it to a drop yard or whatever. Um, I guess not favor, just looking out for a driver. And she said, yeah, you know, but I'll care about my drivers. That was really going on. And then what happened was at the end was, well, Shane, you, you can't relay it. And I'm like, what do you mean you can't relay? You told me that you would, I would get this here. And I told you the load was going to be early and you relay it or you get set me up for a relay. Well, we, we can't. So you're just going to have to sit there. All right, so I started getting getting that boom miles start going down, and then uh, that happens, and then um, sitting on the weekend miles start going down, boom, um, doing those favors and not asking for extra compensation, uh, then then get screwed. You know, not only did you do a favor, then I did that favor. And this is kind of what led it to a boiling point. I did that favor. I got there, and that that uh, receiver punished. It, it was like they punished me, right? Got there. It was a little truck. I checked in and everything. They said, well, you're late. And I said, well, you know, I realize that this load is late, but I am not late. I said, by the time I was assigned this load, ma'am, I said, what you all don't see is I'm doing this load as a favor for the company that I contracted with. I said, however... I said, I am here. If there's a late fee, I understand. I'll call my uh, driver manager right now, and, and they'll pay you that late fee so this freight can get offloaded. And the lady had a little bit of an attitude at that receiver, like they always do for uh, uh, reefer loads. Um, I never come across people that were really, really nice about uh, to drivers on reefer loads. But um, so Hertzbach pays that, and then I sat there. I sat there from – I got there. It was around – 10 o'clock in the morning and I sat there and didn't leave until midnight. Um, so I called Hertzbach and I was pissed. I said, you know, I was punished. I did this load as a favor for y'all and I was y'all, y'all punished me. I got punished for this. I said, how is that fair to me? I said, how's that, how's that, how's that fair? That's not fair to me. I, you know, I, I have a business to run. I don't have any loads for the weekend. Now you're telling me that this, there's only other load I'm supposed to do will get me back. Cause I was, you know, obviously trying to go home. will get me down to Texas. So I go down to Texas and then I do that favor. I'm talking about was doing that favor down there because I made my delivery in Texas. I did that favor. And then I sat, I told him I didn't want to be home until uh, Monday or Tuesday of that week. And my driver manager said she was going to have me planned up for that weekend. This is the second time that happened. And I sat the whole weekend at their Dallas terminal mm. and I, I didn't make any money. I made, I made money off a load that I took from the Midwest to the Dallas, which was around 1100 miles. And then I went 30 miles. Mm. I didn't even break. I, I, I didn't even break, you know, 12, 1300. I didn't even break that. Mm. So my settlement was in the red for that week right, because they was, taking, they was they was taking uh they you know they still you still gotta they you still gotta deductions. take those deductions you you still got they they still yep. take their deductions regardless of whatever whatever miles you do man so to sum up everything in the beginning in the beginning it was good you was you was making good money and uh you know uh, everything was uh uh sunshine and roses and then towards the end towards the end of your stay with the company it was it was all thunderstorm what what was the how, how yeah. long how long you uh how long you rocked out with the company i rocked out with the company i was there for how did i get on it was for about 
five, six months old, something like that, um, that I was there for. And uh, it was it was really good. And they their excuse was, hey, Shane, the freight, like when I, after all that happened, I took my home time and I came back out and I sat for a little bit more. I said, hey, I said, uh, I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm, 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 I can't. I said, how can I, I I'm in the red for that for that week that y'all screwed me. Because I said, I didn't screw myself. Y'all screwed me. I was supposed to be set up that week. Then I went home in the red for that week. I said, I would have taken this week as a loss because I'm going home. I said, but now here I am sitting again for a third week in a row with no freight. And you're telling me I'm about to take a third week loss. My expenditures are going to be through the roof. And you're telling me it's because of the freight volume. Mm. Nah, man, I don't, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear right, it. So, like, so 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 you rocked out so you rocked out with him for uh for five months and it pretty much uh pretty much went went downhill from there before you started uh before you started uh looking for other opportunities that uh that will take care of you yeah. and your family. Um uh, Yeah, and to top it off, I'm be honest with you, to top it off when they offered me, you know, a second option to stay, they're like, Hey, well we have a we have a dedicated route that we just got. It's coming out of Dallas, Texas. And I started laughing. I said, y'all want me to take a dedicated route out of Dallas when I just sat in Dallas for that whole weekend prior to coming you home? Could, y'all crazy, you, you man. Gave, you, they they could have gave you something out of there while you were sitting. That's what's up. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. So overall, man, uh, now I know guys, uh, I know he just said he only been with the company for – uh, a short time and this is only his experience but uh if you guys want to know you know if y'all want to go over to Hirschbot, definitely go over there and see what you guys can uh do you know do what it do you know what i'm saying uh would you so would you suggest uh Hirschbach, uh would you recommend Hirschbach to uh any any new drivers or anything like that is there or let me rephrase that is there any bad feelings with Hirschbach? boom look at that he was about to get hit there's a bad feeling because still to this day i don't think austin lied to me all right i don't think he lied to me about the numbers and about the miles i was getting because obviously i was getting at the beginning what i'm what i'm ultimately upset about and upset with is with my driver manager. She went from being sweet, doing favors, to um, pretty much treating me as if I'm just another driver. And she didn't really, I didn't really matter. Okay. And uh, that set a different tone because I was like, you know, at first I'm like, man, I had such a good relationship with this girl. And, and now it's like, like I'm a redheaded stepchild, <laughs> you know, no pun intended, I'm redheaded, but... <laughs> I mean, I mean, now you treat me like I'm an employee. I'm not an employee. I have expenses. Right, you're, you're, I have you're expenses. Not a company I driver. have. I'm you're, not doing you're, this. You're, you're, I'm not doing this for right. free. <laughs> well, and I'm not doing it to to make a couple hundred bucks when I could take my ass to Walmart, tell people welcome to Walmart, and make just about and, the same, and not have this type of expense. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, man. Hey, I, I want to thank you for coming on, man. For uh, for for sharing your experience with uh, with Hirschbach. Uh, if you guys is interested in Hirschbach, uh, you definitely could give him a call and uh, you know, probably talk with uh, probably talk with the uh, with the recruiter that you know he talked to. But just make sure that um, uh, just make sure that you get a that you get a good. Uh, driver manager <laughs> You know like I said before I always say uh, The fleet manager and the driver manager Once you get a, a report with them <laughs> Once you get a report with them it, it makes life at the company A hell of a lot better man Hey I, I want to thank you uh, Shane For coming on uh, I really do appreciate it man nah, Hey man it's my pleasure My like guy. I watch a lot of your videos, so um, that's the, I watch every of them, but I watch a lot of them, and I love your style, and I love your channel, man, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll come on the show anytime, bro, and uh, I appreciate you hitting me up, and, uh, hey, man, y'all be safe, and uh, be easy. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming on and sharing uh, sharing your experience, 
and definitely uh, sharing uh, sharing the information about her spot, man. If you guys want to come on and uh, holler at me, all you got to do is get at me in the Gmail. That's LockoutMenPodcast at gmail.com. Or you can call me, 216. Well, no, no, don't call me. No, you don't. Just text me, 216-600-2090. Or go over to Instagram, subscribe over at Instagram, and hit me up in the DM over there, man. This is exposed. You know what I'm saying? The, you know, the, a lot of a lot of information out there for Hirschbot so you guys can uh, digest. If there's any companies that you want me to, you know, that you want me to talk about, or if you want to come on and and chop it up with me about any companies that uh, that you have driven, dri- drive, or driven for. You know what I'm saying? Come on and, uh, and let me know. Uh, until then, I am Lockout Man, your humble host. That was my man Shane for coming on and talking about her. And with that said, we are gone.